Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil has already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and towed a tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my hands. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You might notice as we travel through this service tonight, that today is a day truly blessed with symbolic richness. We gather tonight to celebrate this Mass, 
to share in some of Jesus' final moments with his disciples before his trial and crucifixion. We recall the Last Supper, as shared with us in St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians that we heard just now, and in the washing of feet, as shared with us in St John's Gospel. At the end of the Mass, we will travel with Jesus to the Garden of Gethsemane, and then at 10 o'clock tonight, we will hear powerfully from Jesus that the time has come, that the end is near, that he will be handed over. As we hear the readings that we've heard so far from St. Paul and from St. John, there is a powerful notion that if all we do tonight is remember all that happened to Jesus, then we've only got half the story. I'll admit that's not a bad start, and a lot more than many people will get tonight. But we gather on this night specifically to remember this story and to share with him in these deeds. So what should we notice if we're to complete the picture? What accompanies the words that we've heard is the deeds that were done. And what accompanies the deeds that were done are the words that we have heard. In our first reading from St Paul's letter to the Corinthians, we heard a story that we know so well. It's a story that we recall at least once a week, and for many of us, more often than that. But just notice for a moment the words that St Paul uses. Notice first the deeds of Jesus. He took bread. He gave thanks. He broke the bread. And only then did he instruct his disciples. This is my body. And then more. Do this in remembrance of me. The deeds themselves are powerful. They should be. They are the deeds of the Jewish Passover. The head of every family in Jerusalem would that night be taking bread, giving thanks and breaking the bread. The disciples would have felt very much at home with these deeds. But then the words. This is my body. Now the disciples have sat up and paid attention. What does he mean? Do this in remembrance of me. Why? Where's he going? Can we remember all those things that he's said to us? He's talked about the day when he won't be with us anymore. And now he says we have to do something in remembrance of him. The deeds themselves are powerful, but it is the words that will have made a difference in that night and which St Paul reminds the Corinthians of as he writes to them to correct their wayward theology and practices. This is your practice. And as often as you do this, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Because this is what he called you to do. The Last Supper is at the very centre of our faith, and not because we take bread, not because we give thanks over it, not because we break it and share it, but because we do it in remembrance of him. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after we have shared this tonight, it will be this same bread which takes the journey around this church, which travels as Jesus travelled to Gethsemane, and which we will keep watch with at the altar of repose as the disciples watched with Jesus in the garden. This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. But then we go further into the story. 
St John in his gospel tells us of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. Again, deeds and words sit alongside each other in the story. Jesus is carrying out the work of a servant. The deeds are striking and they are misunderstood. That famous blunderer, St Peter, once again puts his foot in it, if you'll excuse the pun. He fails to understand. No, you won't wash my feet. You're not my servant. You must wash me for me to have a part with you. Okay then, but not only my feet, all of me. But in the end, he had to settle for the feet alone. Once again, the notion of washing feet is not an unusual one. Perhaps it was more common for a servant to do it, but feet were dirty and needed to be washed. And once again, perhaps it is the words that accompany these deeds which need the most attention. Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. You should do to one another as I have done to you. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Powerful words indeed. Words of promise. Words of blessing. Words which bring us today, as in a few minutes' time, those who have volunteered or had their arms twisted, despite apprehension, embarrassment or concern, to have their feet washed to do as Jesus calls us to do, to dwell on those powerful words as we reflect on the deeds. And that's our challenge today in the world that we live in. Where do words meet with deeds? We are gathered here and our deeds in this night are surely noble. They are the deeds that Jesus calls us to do. We will share in the Last Supper. Some of us have agreed to have our feet washed. We will travel with Jesus into the Garden of Gethsemane as we approach the altar of repose, the only flowers, the only decoration that will remain in this church at the end of tonight. And some of us may even stay awake until the end, unlike the disciples. But what does this mean to us and to those who we tell that we have travelled with Jesus to the end? Where are the words? Will we tell anyone that in these days of Passion Tide, we have walked with Jesus to the end of his life and have powerfully and emotionally received him into our souls and bodies in the sacrament of the altar by the washing of feet, and by the standing tomorrow at the foot of the cross. Do this in remembrance of me. If we remember him, what words are ours to tell the story? The words are there for us. Do this in remembrance of me. The words are his, and the words today are ours. And just as these words accompanied the deeds that Jesus performed, they stay with us and keep our faith alive, even when he himself has gone to death. Because we know that there is a resurrection. We know that in three days' time we will rejoice. And if we will do that, as we will, how will the world know? Do this in remembrance of me.